Hello Dungeons and Dragons fans. Today we're going to go into how to populate your dungeon. Now the most important thing about putting together an adventure for your players is the story. But after you get done with the story and putting it all together, outlining it and putting the things in place, you have to build the dungeons, the part where the combat is going to take place. So, in this particular case, I've got Icky Slime Mold and his band of slobbering gnolls, and they are going to go through this adventure. So in this story, Icky and his friends have been hired to escort a elven princess to the city where she lives. She had been visiting abroad, and now it's time for her to return home. And she'd like a little extra protection that her own elven guards can't provide. So Icky and his friends escort the princess to the elven city. Once they get to the elven city, the elven princess goes missing. And it then becomes Icky's job to go throughout the city and find out what has happened to make the princess suddenly disappear. This will be where most of the role playing for this adventure takes place. They'll have to find out different clues about what's going on. In this particular case, I have an elven noble who's the main villain, and he's got a dwarf servant who's kind of acting as a go-between. However, the elven noble is actually not the main villain. It's actually a person who's acting through the elven noble, who in this particular case will be the queen who isn't the queen, but we'll get into that later. So the party uncovers a whole bunch of clues. They've discovered that the elven princess has been kidnapped by the dwarven servant, and then they get the dwarven servant back. Then all of a sudden, as they are returning the princess to the queen, three dragons show up saying, our eggs are missing and you elves are responsible. Give the eggs back in two weeks or we will go to war and we will burn your city to the ground. In our part two of the adventure, which is what we're going to be discussing today. The queen then hires the adventurers to go to the dragon's lair and uncover why the eggs are missing and what could be going on. Because she, of course, has no idea why the eggs are missing. Or does she? So, what is going to be the theme of this dungeon? Could it be undead? But it's because, you know, zombies, they just want you to be their friends. Uh, you always know that zombies are going to be good friends because they want you for your brains. Could it be dragons? Could it be goatmen? Could it be flying furry snakes? In this case, Icky is going to be facing a dragon. Let's go get the dragon, guys! Once you get the theme down, we'll have to go into building the map of the dungeon. Dawn breaks, and you find yourself in front of the dragon's lair. I, Icky, will fix the dawn! It doesn't need to be broken! So, what is your dungeon? What is the terrain that your dungeon is set in? Dungeons, sewers, castles, dense forests, cave systems, ruins, desert oases. There are all sorts of places where you could have your dungeon set up. This, of course, means that the next thing you're going to need is graph paper and a pencil to draw out your dungeon. And if you want to cheat, there are plenty of dungeon maps online that you can use. And they don't cost anything, as long as you, of course, don't publish them anywhere. One of the things you're going to have to decide at this point in time is how many rooms are there going to be? And at this point, it's good to know that the number of rooms actually determines how much play time it's going to take to navigate the dungeon. As a general rule, each room is going to take about an hour of play time. So one session would be, say, three rooms. And you'd be able to get through that in one session, because most D&D sessions are about three to four hours. And so if you wanted to do 
maybe a couple of sessions, like three sessions, you do a 10 room dungeon. Or if you wanted to do an extra long dungeon, you might do three levels and 30 rooms total. This would be about six months for most game parties. I, Icky, will assault the Dragon Slayer. I can take the heat. The next thing that you're going to want to do is populate your dungeon with monsters. Lions, tigers, and bears, oh my, especially the bears. They can be unbearably grisly at times. So how difficult do the monsters in this dungeon have to be in order for you to be able to do what you need to do to get everything done? So really what you need to start with here is the level of your party times the difficulty of the encounters in the dungeon times the number of party members. There's a handy chart on page 82 of the Dungeon Master's Guide that you can use to help you out with this. So Icky's party is seventh level, and there are six members of the party. For easy encounters, it's going to be 350 times six, so roughly about 2,100. For medium encounters, that's going to be about 750 times 6, so about 4,500. Now, for the really difficult encounters, we're going to go with about 1,100 times 6, so 6,600. Uh, it's going to be the experience level that we're going to go with. And we'll kind of go backwards from there to determine what the challenge rating of each of those things are. Because the challenge rating is based on monster so if you use more monsters that increases the challenge rating you can decrease the number of monsters in several of the cases we're going to have one monster which is going to be really tough and so that's going to be the more challenging things in the dungeon now choosing which monsters you can use you can go to page 306 of the dungeon master's guide and there'll be a handy dandy list of all the monsters that are in the monster manual and what their challenge ratings are and how much experience each of those challenge ratings is worth. So the first monster we're going to put in here is going to be a bunch of dragonborn warriors, wizards, and assassins. Ah, it's nice to meet you! Shanks for your time! Now, these are going to just be non-player characters that are just rolled up like regular player characters without all the extra stuff for backstory and so forth. The conversion is basically the challenge rating times 1.8 is going to equal the non-player character's level. I'm going to use a challenge rating of 3 to basically put them on par with the characters in the party so that I can put an equal number of these non-player enemies in with against the party. That's 3 times 1.8, so a bunch of 5th level non-player character enemies each one being about worth 700 experience points. So each of these encounters is going to be worth about 4,200 experience points, divided, of course, among the different player characters that are involved in the fight. Next, I'm going to throw in some trolls. They're challenge rating 5, so there'll be about three of those per encounter. I'll throw in a cloud giant, Major Domo, in the dungeon. So he's going to be a challenge rating 9, that's about 5,000 experience points. And I'll end up with a young red dragon, challenge rating 10, about 5,900 experience points. I have a handy dandy grid map that I use some dry erase markers on. And so I'm going to create tokens by using some artwork and just cutting out quarter size tokens for each of the monsters that we're going to use. Now, if you want to use a monster that's not part of the challenge rating, that's fine. You can make existing monsters tougher or weaker, depending on what's going to fit well in your particular dungeon. Most of the time, that just means creating things that have more hit points or maybe a higher AC so that they're tougher to hit. Maybe iron golems that are maybe brought down a peg or two by rusting them out. Or perhaps maybe kobolds that explode when you hit them, doing extra damage to the party. Banzai! If you want to create your own monsters, one of the things that you can do is use the guide on page 274 of the Dungeon Master's Guide to help you chart out how difficult those particular monsters are. It's also fun to switch appearances and abilities with different monsters to kind of throw the party off every once in a while. 
So if your party is trying to figure out why a bunch of undead zombies have the abilities of demons, you can be kind of creative along those lines. Throw fire-breathing butterflies at them, or rust monsters with damage immunities. And let me tell you, killer rabbits are incredibly bunny. Now that you have your map and your monsters that you're going to put into your dungeon, now you need to add a description for each of the rooms in your dungeon. Include details like size, exits, floor, any special features that the party needs to know about, and just make a few quick notes about it so that you can read it off as the parties enter the room. Also include a short description of the monster so that when the party sees them, they have a general idea of what they might be up against, but don't tell them what monsters they're up against. Let them figure it out on their own. The next thing you want to do is add a few traps and secret doors. There's a handy dandy chart on page 121 of the Dungeon Master's Guide that will help you out with this. How deadly the trap is and how much dice damage it's going to do. About one third of the rooms in your dungeon or hallways should have some sort of trap or secret door involved. Maybe some slicing blades to cut the party down to size. Then, of course, there needs to be treasure, because why are the party members there in the first place? To get the treasure. Now, depending on the DM, they may have different ideas about how much treasure should be in the dungeon. Me, personally, I think about 50 gold pieces per character per level is about the amount of gold that you want in the dungeon. You can, of course, divide that out by copper pieces, silver pieces, and platinum pieces any gemstones that might be found along the way as well, pieces of art and so forth. There should be at least one magic item per character, and there should be at least one of those magic items for each of the members of the party who is in the dungeon, something that would be appropriate for each of the party members. And of course, most of that treasure is going to be in the treasure room of your dungeon, whatever that happens to be. And there should be about one treasure room for every 10 rooms in your dungeon. Keep in mind, animals don't have treasure. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the animals might not have killed an adventurer earlier and its body might be lying around with whatever it was carrying at the time. The charts for determining treasure in a dungeon can be found on page 136 of the Dungeon Master's Guide. The final thing is that you need to have a hook for the next part of the adventure at the end of the dungeon of, that you are currently inhabiting. So in this particular case, Icky and his party are going to find out that there is some sort of evil demi-lich that is involved, and they need to now go find the demi-lich before they can complete the next phase of the adventure. You exit the dungeon and night is falling. You now know that the evil demi-lich Rotak is behind the theft of the dragon eggs. Aye, Icky, try to pick up the fallen knight! Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. I post weekly. If you have a question or topic you want me to cover, message me on Facebook. If you enjoyed this episode, like or comment below. So long, Dungeons & Dragons fans.